Hello and welcome. Today we are learning how to create reusable code with functions in JavaScript. Let's get started. You've already used some functions and may not have been aware of that. So let's discuss that for just a moment. Methods really are built-in functions. And so if we have a string like my name and then we call a method like, oh, let's say to lowercase, we're calling a function, but it's called a method because it's already built in to JavaScript. Another example, oh, it wouldn't even need to do that. We'll just say math random. That is a built-in function as well. But when we define functions, actually when we declare functions, we are making our own code blocks, our own reusable code blocks. And that is what is so important about functions. Our code becomes more efficient. We can call that block of code as a function again and again and again. So let's define some of our own functions and we'll start with the function declaration syntax. So you can learn each part of how to make a function. We'll start with the word function and then we need to name our function. And let's start with a basic one and call it sum. After that are the parentheses, which are the operators. And we will put parameters in there, but not right now. And after that comes the curly braces. And inside this code block that is held with the curly braces, we put our code that we want to execute. And here we'll put a return statement. And this is the value that the function will return. And we'll just start with two plus two. And right now we have declared our function. I'll save the code and we won't see anything in the console because we haven't sent anything to the console. We haven't even called the function yet. A function needs to be called into action. And just to see the result of the function, I'll create a console log, which is actually its own function or method that was predefined. Now we can call our function. Notice that I have to put the operators afterwards to call it into action, the parentheses after the word sum. And now when I save the file, we get the result of four in the console. And that's because we're returning the sum of two plus two. Now, if we want to always get four back when we call our function, I guess this would be reusable, but it's really not that functional. So let's go ahead and add some parameters in our function. We'll say num1 and num2. And now when we call the function, we need to provide those parameters. So let's say two and six. So we are providing two parameters when we call the function. And in our declaration, we're prepared to receive two parameters. I'll save the file. Oh, I didn't change in the body also need to change that. So I reference the parameters and not the absolute values I had in there previously. And now we get eight in the console as expected. So this makes this a much more reusable function. We can accept any two numbers and then we'll return the sum of those numbers. Let's see what the result is inside the function when we log those and maybe we will forget to provide one of those. So we have our definition here, our declaration of the function. I'm only going to provide one number, one parameter when we call this function. I'll save this. Notice in the console now, we get two, which is num1, our first parameter. The second parameter is undefined. And so when the function attempts to add those two parameters together, it gets not a number in return because it cannot handle the undefined number. So maybe we could prepare for that. We could add some extra code in our function and say if num2 equals undefined, then we should just return num1 plus num1. I'll save that. And now you can see in the console, once again, we get four because we're getting the sum of two plus two. If we call the function with five, 
we get 10 because we're getting the sum of 5 plus 5. However, we can go ahead and call it with two parameters as well, and the function returns the sum of num1 and num2 because num2 has been provided. Let's look at another example. We'll delete our first example function, and we'll create a function called get username from email. And this function will accept an email address. And now we want to return the first part of the email address before the at symbol. So we want to eliminate the at symbol and we want to eliminate the domain from the uh, returned value. So we will go email dot slice. So we're calling a method inside of our function. We want to slice at the very beginning. We want to keep that first part of the email. And now we'll tell the slice method with its second parameter where we want to stop. And we'll use index of, and we'll look for that at symbol. So we know to stop there, and it will not include the at symbol. So this function accepts an email, and then it returns the first part of the email. Once again, we've just defined it. So when I save the file, we don't get anything in the console. Now I'll make a console log statement, and inside the console log statement, we'll see that Visual Studio Code recognizes the name of our new, newly created function, wants to help us out right away. So I will put player1 at some random email.com. Apologies if that is truly an email. And now, save the file, and you can see in the console we just get player1 because our function eliminates the last half of the email. It eliminates the domain and the at symbol. And we can reuse this. So we could use this with, let's just say user at github.com. Once again, apologies if that is really somebody's email. And now we just get user in the console. So our function is very much reusable and should work for any email address. Let's look at another way you might see functions declared, and that could be as anonymous functions. If you don't provide a name, it is an anonymous function. And then you might hold the result of that function, and I guess the entire function, if you will, inside a name, variable name, for example, that you would define. So this actually has the same result of what we had before. And you can see that by, I'll just put dave at davesdomain.com. Save that, and we just get Dave in the console. The function still works as expected, but it is defined slightly differently. And now that we've looked at it this way, and you will see anonymous functions from time to time, and you'll definitely see them as you learn more about uh, calling functions based on events on a web page. But let's also look at a newer way that functions are now defined, and these are called arrow functions. So let's eliminate the word function, and then after our parentheses that contains our parameter, you see an arrow, and that points at this uh, code block, the curly braces of the function. And this will also work in the same way. So I'll just change the front name here in the email, and this will be John at Dave's domain. And now we get John. And so this is what you call an arrow function. Before we finish our first look at functions, let's create one more. So let's eliminate what we've got here. And we'll still start with the const instead of let is what I prefer to use for functions. And we'll use the name to proper case, and we'll make an arrow function. We'll take a name, provide our arrow and our code block. Now we know there are the two lowercase and two uppercase methods, but JavaScript does not have a two proper case. So we'll make our own. And here we'll return, and then we'll use the name parameter that we're going to pass to the function and we'll get the character at the zero position, which will be the first letter of the name. And we'll set that to 
uppercase with the two uppercase method. And then we'll use the addition operator. And again, when we're working with strings, that should just mash together the next part, actually concatenate, if you will, the next part of the name. And so we'll use name again, and now we'll slice, but we'll not start at the zero position, we'll start at the one position. So this will be slicing off that first letter that we've already set to uppercase. And now we'll call to lowercase, and this will return both of those. Once again, this is just a declaration. We have not got anything uh, to return yet into the console window. We haven't called the function. So let's once again use the console log function just so we can see the result of our function. And here we'll call to proper case. Visual Studio Code helped me out there. And now we can put any name in here. And so let's go lowercase d, uppercase v, lowercase v. I believe I said v before. So lowercase d, uppercase a, lowercase v, uppercase e. When we call this function, we'll pass, whoop, we got that in the wrong spot. We'll pass that string. And in the console, we get Dave in proper case. And once again, we could do this with anything Guess it's September right now. Let's put in the month of September. Any string we pass to our function, it will set to proper case. So that is our introduction to functions. Functions provide reusable code. And that is the main thing to take away. We can define blocks of code and call them when we need them. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.